to my virtual house uh, or office, I should say. But uh, I hope you're all doing well and uh, are safe and uh, we're all getting through this one day at a time. Yeah. Got to have hope. Well, Paul, we're, we're really pleased. This is uh, obviously something new, like so many of our members, we're uh, kind of reinventing some of our programming and how we operate and doing an awful lot uh, virtually. And uh, we have so many great leaders on the South Shore, and uh, we don't get enough of a chance to, to really uh, uh, meet them. So uh, we started this series of meeting some of our leadership and uh, leading companies, and it's great to have you uh, kick it off because it is such a brand name, not on the South Shore, but Sullivan Tire is a brand name uh, throughout uh, New England. You've got a great operation. You're a great leader. You've been involved in, in the community. Um, but not everybody uh, knows you. And I'm going to guess that the business did not start out as being uh, New England wide and, and being the dominant uh, player in your industry. You probably started out small and you've gone through some challenges. So uh, can you take a minute to tell us a little bit about the family history and how this all got started? Absolutely, I'll run through that. In uh, 1955, uh, my dad was working for a, a major tire company and uh, the family had just purchased a home, uh, realizing the American dream in Hanson. And he was working in Boston. So from Boston to Hanson back in 55 was a long commute, almost uh, equivalent to the stagecoach. But um, my w mother would love to have him come home. And lo and behold, on his way home one night, uh, he got a call from the auditors from Akron saying that he has to lay off three of his people. That was half of his workforce. Well, he didn't know if he could do that. Uh, and he was a man of great integrity. And he just realized that people need that weekly paycheck. They needed housing. They needed food each week. They needed to raise their family, possibly go on a vacation, have medical insurance, so on and so forth. So when he got home that night, uh, or on his way, and he saw a business for one sign in Rockland, Mass, Washburn Tire. He knocked on the door and Mrs. Washburn had just lost her husband. And it was an old barn. And uh, there was one garage where she kept her automobile. And she said, uh, well, you can rent it and you can use my uh, garage, but the car's got to be out at eight in the morning and back in no later than four o'clock or the rent's going to go up. So he went home that night and he said to my mother, Mary, I think we're going to go into business for ourselves." And that was the start of it. A great risk. He was he understood risk and he understood, understood sweat equity. And he recruited the whole family. We were all in it from various stages of our, our upbringing. And uh, it's turned out wonderful, but uh, not without a lot of pain state, that's for sure. And uh, of course this uh, COVID-19 is just adding to the list. But, uh, you know, after 65 years, uh, we feel that uh, we'll not only get through this, but we'll be a stronger organization and we'll continue to help more people than ever. Uh, so, uh, we're proud of Sullivan Tire. We stayed in that one bond from 1955 to 1970. So, in there were just seven of us full-time employees. Wow. And so, today we have 1,300. Uh, and uh, we're proud of each and every one of them. Yeah. We feel like 
They're part of the Sullivan family, and that's the way we go to bed each and every day. So, Paul, in terms of business challenges, is this, um, is this the biggest challenge your company's had going through something like uh, a national shutdown? Well, you know, that's an interesting question. I have to separate family, although I hate to do it because it's Sullivan Tire family. Uh, so when I separate family to business, I think losing four siblings in seven years. And then uh, shortly thereafter, a year after, I lost my mother and my son within uh, eight days. So I, I think that was certainly a challenge, not only for myself, and you know, I'm not, not gonna belabor that point, but uh, when one person dies, it affects us all. And I think uh, going through those periods of time, they were certainly dark days at Sullivan Tire, but the support that we have for one another is just awesome. So today with COVID on the business side, it is uh, certainly has interrupted uh, business, our way of life. The expense train is driving up the rear of the revenue track. So we've got to start reassessing uh, what we're doing there and we will. Uh, but uh, I think things will come back. You know, one of the great uh, people of American literature, modern literature, who just uh, passed away a couple of years ago, Maya Angelou, said, when you have fear and hope in the same room, occupying the same space, only invite one to stay. <laughs> So listen, that's nothing I made up. So I wanted to get her name right out front there. But uh, it's always something that reminds us that uh, you got to start with hope. And uh, I just think that's a, a daily lesson for me to take to work each and every morning. Yep. You know, you're a, you're a, a famous face, uh, not only in the South Shore, but New England, because of all the... Uh, the TV ads, and particularly with the sports teams. How, how did you get uh, started with the Red Sox and uh, all of the uh, TV commercials that you do? Well, first of all, when you say famous face, uh, those superlatives, I hear enough superlatives on television and the news, so uh, you know who I mean. But anyway, I don't want to get into politics. So, uh, you know, Sullivan Tire, we uh, were approached by Nesson in 1983 when they were uh, just starting out. And uh, they were going to bring Red Sox baseball into the homes of people throughout uh, New England. We did not at the time, certainly, did not have uh, stores in New Hampshire or Maine or Rhode Island or Connecticut for that matter. But we were going to plant the seed, cultivate the seed, and slowly, hopefully, it would germinate into Sullivan Tire with 107 locations. And uh, people were just starving for the uh, baseball and the Bruins. It would be brought right to their living, living room, the uh, electronic uh, sports arena and they could uh, go on their cable. So it's been uh, a great vehicle for us in getting our brand out there. So uh, we're very proud of Sullivan Tire, but we always remain humble when things like this come upon us. So I have a, I have a great uh, admiration for the small businesses. I still go in each and every morning to Asinippi and take my oatmeal to go and eat it in the parking lot with Joe Zacchio, our chief operating officer. 
and we kind of uh, go over uh, what's about to take place uh, at Sullivan Tire for the day. Yeah. But, uh, just to see people hoping there'll be customers. Yeah. And they'll appreciate what they're doing. It gives them hope. And if we can leave that behind, I think that uh, is something good that uh, we can continue to do. Uh, and we will do it. You know, there, there are lots of uh, business challenges out there that, that people have uh, uh, gone through. I'm going to open up the mics and invite people to, to unmute. Uh, but I, I see uh, Jane Kernan is on and she's got a story of, uh, if I can put her on the spot. Jane, are you, are you unmuted and on? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to share your story? Uh, well, sure. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you for the words of inspiration. I wrote down your quote, and it means a lot. Um, Thank you. Uh, I had been a part of uh, Lighthouse Media, which published 12 different magazines including South Shore Living. I had been in charge of all the sales in this region. And um, at the end of 18, uh, actually on basically Christmas Eve last year, uh, we got a notice that the company ceases to exist as of five o'clock that day. So oh. 30 of us were fired on Christmas Eve <laughs> with with nothing to show for it. And um, even worse than that, a lot of our clients were hurt and there was money basically stolen from, from people that, that knew us as the face of the company. So that was pretty shocking. I have two kids in college <laughs> and a third going to college. Oh, cool. and it was just awful, but I had, been in charge of the sales. I knew the numbers. I knew we had our best year ever and were um, more popular than ever. And um, I just did a little homework and figured out um, what the cost structure would be to do this. The owner that ended up being dishonest had never really been a part of the work that had to be done. He was kind of a, a just an owner. So uh, I got together with the other people that had actually done the work. And uh, within a week, we were uh, starting our own version of South Shore Living. It's called South Shore Home Life and Style. And um, we completed a year already. And we have uh, a tremendous amount of subscribers. We're on 250 newsstands. And um, our website is um, incredibly popular. So uh, nice really this, it, you know, out of fear and hope, we chose hope and we just, um, I think it's, it's the best thing. I'm really proud of what we've done. Um, and, and I think we're going to make it through this issue because we are here to celebrate the positive stories of the South Shore and the amazing people. And there will always be an audience to, um, for good uplifting stories. So. Well, Jane, you just got an ad from me. Okay, because I've been trying to get into <laughs> New York no, for about a year no now. <laughs> this is a first. And, uh, I, there's always a surprise here. So you're going to get an ad, but please don't call me today because there's a lot going on. Yeah, okay. But uh, listen, when you can sell you advertising, you can sell anything. What a skill. Great skill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you can write, well, it doesn't matter where the company is. You know, that's a great skill in itself. You know, I think that's what the chamber is all about, a collaboration of people who have right. uh, skill sets. And it's not always the name on the building because the skill will travel. 
And I guarantee you that. Well, good, thank you. Good people that care about others, uh, yeah. so the less fortunate uh, will continue to grow. So, yes, uh, you're getting an ad from Sullivan Tire, but uh, don't send me the rate card. Sharpen your pencil. Get yeah. <laughs> I like to change. As Peter would say, I like the chamber discount. <laughs> okay. I'm only kidding. You. Yes, congratulations. So that that was not a a, um, a setup. Right, oh, huh? I, no, I that was not pre-rehearsed. No. You know, I, I just love some of the stories. We have so many entrepreneurs on the South Shore, and and so many started because of some disruption in their career or the business they were in you know, working for big Boston corporations or giving up on the commute and just starting something uh, down here. Um, it's just amazing how people overcome what looks like a, uh, a crisis and you realize, no, it was a temporary challenge and, uh, and they come out of it. Well, uh, it's, it's native to the South Shore, small businesses. And, yep. uh, you know, we consider ourselves a small business. Uh, we're on the Little League field fence. We're in the church bulletin. We're supporting the police and the fire and the uh, the Women's Guild and, and so on and so forth. So we will continue to do that. Uh, we want to, you know, we uh, we hearken for the day yeah, when we were very sick. And uh, we, so even though we're growing, uh, we like the uh, intimacy of a small business, believe me, mm -hmm. knowing your people. Hi, hi, can I can I jump in? Hi, Paul, it's Jill from the Chamber. Yes, Jill, yes, I, you certainly can, yeah. I think we have a friend in common, uh, Christy Doyle. Oh, yep. yes, now, yeah, I know, I just spoke to him the other day on the phone. Are you still playing ping pong? Oh, that's not ping pong. What is it? Racquetball? That's racquetball. Stan, you probably will have to correct her. <laughs> that's racquetball. No, I think Chris was uh, number Definitely one. Definitely racquetball. <laughs> he was number one in the country. Oh, wow. wow. Amazing. <laughs> uh, speaking of sports, can you tell us a little bit about your, um, uh, your, uh, your TV commercials with Dustin Pedoya from the Red Sox? And how did that come about? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's an interesting story. Thank you. That's a good question. Uh, Dustin Pedroia, I may be off on a year, so I apologize, but uh, he came up to Boston, uh, previously playing in Portland, where we have a store uh, directly across the street. I got to give Sullivan Tire a plug here. And uh, then he went to Pawtucket came up to the Red Sox for a short stint. He couldn't hit, but he was a hustler. And that's an at attribute that we certainly uh, like here at Sullivan Tire. So his, his dad is in the tire business out in Sacramento, California. And we got in touch with the dad and he got in touch with Dustin and we uh, all decided to meet in Arizona uh, in the off season. And, uh, you know, I went out with a suit, you know, a suit on, and I met this gentleman uh, who I work with from New York. And he's in, he's in his suit, and we land in Phoenix, and it's 90 degrees, and we look kind of weird, you know, with suits on in Phoenix. So we're meeting Dustin across the street from the uh, place where he works out uh, downtown. And uh, he's in shots, and his father's in shots, and they're very accommodating people. Dustin's uh, uh, very jovial, and he said, uh, Mr. Sullivan, sit right down here. We just ordered lunch for us all. And uh, he ordered 42, piece, uh, 42 pieces of uh, that, um, Oh, you know, it's skipping my mind to the uh, fish. What is it? Sushi. Thank you. <laughs> A little audience here. 
And back then, I said, sushi, I'm not touching that. <laughs> I need to agree. But all of a sudden, the tray of sushi came out. And of course, he's an athlete, so he's watching a lot. You know, but I could, I'm thinking of a cheeseburger at the time. And uh, he digs into that, and uh, the tails are hanging out of the sandwich. And I said, <laughs> he said, Mr. Sullivan, if we're going to connect, you've got to eat more of these. So I said, I'll take them for the team. <laughs> but I had a glass of orange uh, drink or whatever it was right beside me. <laughs> and from then forward, uh, you know, we met each and every year. We did sports. He's a wonderful, wonderful kid. He's going through a heartbreaking situation now. When you lose your health as an athlete, uh, you get into a real dark room. So uh, he'll, he'll come out of it. He's a fighter. And uh, who knows, he might get back on the tie business with his dad. If he does, uh, we'll try to sell him some tires. But I, he'll be coaching somewhere. So, uh, you know, Dustin Pedroia, wonderful. He won the MVP a year or two after. And here we are with this kid that no one believed he could do it. So we had a real gem there. He's a real gentleman and a great family man, a great husband. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, Tito Francona was another one back in, I believe it was 2008, 2009. It was a misty morning down in Fort Myers. And this gentleman who I mentioned, uh, New York, and buys all our television time, who it meant. And he says, I got some bad news for you. You're going to have to sit down. Well, I thought there might have been a uh, somebody sick back at home. We had gone through so much as a family. He said, uh, Terry, is, uh, Terry is sick. He can't get out of bed. I said, oh, boy. Let me get him on the phone. He says, really? I said, yeah, I'll call him. So I called him. I said, Terry, what? What, Paul? I said, uh, we got to have you. We have lighting people here. We have, uh, we have uh, sound. We have a little makeup for you. Oh, I'm not taking any makeup. I'm sick. I can't do it today. I said, you got to do it today. I'm flying back tomorrow. He says, all right, give me an hour. One hour later, he was on the field. He was wonderful. As a matter of fact, during the filming of the sport, a sports writer came out to him and said, we're all waiting for you. There's been a trade announced in the locker room. So I said, uh, Terry, why don't you go and uh, attend to the uh, press conference? He said, no, let's do, let's do the spot. I'm having more fun. So he did the spot. And he's just a first-class gentleman. I'll always root for him, except when they play the Red Sox. But uh afterwards he said now where are you going i said i'm flying right home i just like to go somewhere i'm going to see if i can go to one of the gyms and take it <laughs> he goes you come right in here with me and we walk in the locker room in the locker room all the uh, press are there i don't know who they traded he says come on out back to my own shower he said take this bat home he grabs a bat and uh, I, I said, ordinarily, I wouldn't. I'm not, I'm not a memorabilia person, but uh, I would bring it home to my brother, Joe, who was a collector. And uh, he says, there's towels here, there's deodorant, there's soap, blah, blah, blah. Just first class. And uh, we had a great relationship with him. And uh, we continue today. But they have to be good people. We, you know, we meet them. We meet them for coffee. We're not going to ask them for anything. We're not going to. We don't want to take time out from their families. We understand the demands that they all have. So uh, we hope it comes across that way on the screen. And so far, uh, we've had pretty good luck. But uh, 
we never let our guard down. That was a long answer, I'm sorry. Hey, Paul, we've got two past chairs of the chamber joining us, Elena Kirkley's and, and Paula Harris. And Paula had something she wanted to ask. All right, Paula. Paul, it's wonderful to see you, and I'm looking forward to the days when I see you in the uh, community. Um, right, right. You are one of my marketing mentors. So can you give all of us small businesses some advice, what we should be thinking about marketing so when we come out of this downturn, we're really raring to go? When you come out of this downturn, everybody get out and meet your customers. Put the, uh, I know uh, this is going against the grain, Paula, and I know you're a big technical person, but take a day and put the technology aside. Go out and meet people. You are the people who know how to talk. I mean, it, selling is a great skill. But it starts with just introducing yourself and talking about uh, the trials and tribulations of the COVID-19, how people got through. And then you can apply the technology. But I, I you know, I'm a firm believer in pressing the flesh shaking hands uh, when I know people. Paula, if I could, I'd probably want to give you a hug now, but uh, you know, there's all this social distancing. And I told Peter, I do have my mask on today. So I didn't know if it was going to be required. Uh, but uh, I would say get out and meet people, call people. But uh, I, I think uh, business owners, decision makers are being bombarded with emails and texts. So I think uh, you'd be doing yourself a favor as a small business, getting out and meeting people. Paula, I know you and Bill do. So uh, I'm certainly not uh, preaching to the choir. No, you people are wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you for that great. wise advice. Now, I had one question. Actually, this was Peter Foreman's question. He thought I'd be embarrassed uh, if he does ask this uh, and follow you. And his question was, how often do I brush my hair? <laughs> I said, no, hold, I'll answer that. That's not a problem. I've been asked that many, many a time. So, uh, one day I asked my mother, I'm, I'm one of 10, or I was one of 10. There were 10, 10 Sullivans growing up. I said, Ma, I can't find the hairbrush. She said, let it be. You have wispy hair like I do. Just let it go. And uh, from that point on, it was just uh, parental permission uh, without the slip to say, that's the way it's going to be. There's no, there's no brush. Uh, it's uh, it's natural, you know. So so the last time you brushed your hair was as a teenager. Oh, uh, you know, I might look a little better when I uh, <laughs> commercial, but not much. I can tell. <laughs> no, no. I, listen, that's who I am, and. Uh, that's who uh, represents Sullivan Tire, and I hope I do it in a good way. I, uh, you know, it's something that I'm recognizant of. You know, you're reaching uh, hundreds of thousands of homes each day. Of course, we're not now without the Celtics, the Bruins, and the Red Sox. So there's a lot of uh, television that isn't being uh, aired right now. So. Uh, we're careful of that, you know. Well, it, it is a, a great brand name, and you've helped so many. I know Andrea Pike is on the uh, uh, the call. She's the uh, executive director at Friendship Home, and she sits on our board as well. Um, Hello, Andrea. And, and you're on their board, I believe, aren't you? Yes, I, I am. am. Yeah. I am. I, am. I, uh, I love the Friendship Home and, uh, you know, what they represent. It's the story of the founding of Friendship Home, but 
uh, the, you know, the new skill set that it demands right now to continue to grow and protect our most, uh, our most innocent people, the people who need a, need a hug, and that's the less fortunate, giving them some independence and some joy in their life. Whenever you can do that, boy, what a gift. You're not only giving yourself and fellow board members, but you, you're giving to other people who see it. And uh, Andrea, I applaud you and your whole team. So thank you. Thanks, Paul. It's so yeah. nice to see your face. <laughs> Um, we're doing some really interesting things over at Friendship Home right now through um, virtual classes and Zooming for our clubs. And this Saturday night, we're going to have a, um, a Zoom comedy show for our members um, to keep them engaged and entertained. And um, it's been, this has been a wild ride the past five or six weeks, um, but we're doing everything that we can to take care of our families still. So, and through a lot of support from, from you, Paul. So thank you so much. Well, you're, you're welcome and uh, keep up the wonderful, wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you. And you keep your face mask on. You're very important to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Am I the only one that is equipped with a face mask today? Uh, I got mine one in the car. In the car. Yeah, mine's in the car. But yours oh, looks really I could, good. I could have said that. <laughs> mine's in the car, yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one at Friendship Home, so I didn't bring it in. I'm the only one I, here today. <laughs> Elaine, are you there? Hi, Elena. Well, I am. Hi, Elena. How, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Long I'm time. Great. It's so good to see everybody. I hope you're all faring well through these trying times for people. Uh, what a nice idea, Peter, to do this. And Paul, for you to be the first host is very fitting. Um, I see so many friends out there and I'm glad you look well. Yeah, well, you do the same and uh, it's nice to reconnect to people and uh, Peter doesn't do, I, I'm gonna critique Peter for a moment. This will probably be my last visit here. <laughs> but, uh, no, he doesn't do a good enough job promoting this South Shore Chamber. <laughs> Please, maybe we could uh, buy some television and promote the chamber more. I, I don't know. Look at uh, Paula laughing, saying, oh boy, he's stepped out of bounds, but. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 but uh, this is a wonderful format. Uh, given the circumstances, and uh, like I say, uh, I like to touch people uh, and uh, really connect and reconnect to people. So this is a a little awkward, but uh, we'll make the best best of it. Well, it's great. You know, it's been a few years since we had you speak to uh, one of our seven forty four breakfast or uh, eleven forty four lunches. So. Um, we gave you an award and had you speak, I think, at uh, one of the old expo lunches. So we'll have to get you back to do one of those. One of our yeah, 744s. Really. Well, 744s, I'll have to stay at the uh, little motel in front of it the night before. Well, we'll, we'll do that. We've done That's that. It's an early the... morning. <laughs> but uh, no, I'd be glad to. And uh, But it's got to be interesting for people. Uh, Everybody wakes up early in the morning. They say, oh, I got to rush through the traffic and get there. And who's going to be the speaker? It's Paul Sullivan. Oh, I see him on television. That's enough. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll come up with something good. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it. Uh, a duet, Peter. You and I. We, we, we could do something. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. We'll, yeah. We'll play it. It's... Yeah, um, no. Listen, we're, we're everybody we a, should get a chance to do it. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a lineup of 744s this year that we were uh, planning. It was actually going to be a, a pretty full schedule through spring and into the year. We're now thinking that uh, we might not be able to have one until the fall because people may be nervous about coming to uh, a large hall event. So our thinking is through the summer, it'll probably be a lot of smaller group events. Uh, but people may just be too nervous about 
coming into a room with a few hundred people. Yeah, well, you know, I hope it gets better. But, uh, you know, I'm not one that's stuck on the news, so I don't watch a lot of news because uh, politics enters, uh, enter it. And uh, all of a sudden, you're not sure what you're listening or hearing. Uh, but uh, I hope it does get better for all, uh, especially the small businesses who uh, are affected each day, not each week, each day. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I just hope and pray that it gets better for all. Good. So we're coming up towards the uh, 45 minute limit on these uh, Zoom meetings that, that we have. Uh, let me ask you, we're doing some thinking here as a small business, looking at our own operation and our constituency and um, all of our small businesses who are gonna have to reinvent themselves and adjust their business plans. Uh, you've been very active with the chamber for years. What can the chamber do for Sullivan Tire and what do you think we ought to be thinking about doing for our uh, members and the businesses on the South Shore as we come out of this shutdown and think about economic recovery? Uh, well, you know, the chamber does so much uh, that sometimes uh, people fail to uh, understand the full story. So there's a lot of opportunity. You have a portfolio of uh, uh, not only events, but elements to the organization. Uh, of course, I lean on television, cable television, where you could buy it pretty inexpensively. And uh, use some of your members to give testimonials. Uh, I'm not... I'm not volunteering here. I'm glad to, but you, all these people right in my purview here, this is pretty neat, but um, let them tell the story. Uh, how, yeah, because there'll be new businesses starting and the businesses that are currently uh, struggling will be stronger. And uh, when this is over, I wanna all reconnect and see if these words hold true. Uh, I think I'm sounding like MacArthur now, but uh, I don't <laughs> but uh, we're all going to get stronger. Yeah. Great. I appreciate that. Anybody joining us have a uh, a last minute question or comment they'd like to to make? Oh, there's got to be a hard question. Um, Peter, it's Elena. I don't have a hard question. I don't think I, I joined the uh, party, the meeting late, and I apologize for that. I was on a conference call that lasted longer than I thought. I do want to thank everybody that took the time to come to this to meet with us and me. Um, but I also, if you haven't talked about it already, our first responders and we know so many of them so well because they're right within our community. And I'm talking about the people at the grocery stores, the people that are there to help us for our cars call, uh, yeah. all of those folks, and in particular, the people at South Shore Hospital who are really putting themselves on the front line and exposing themselves to things that I don't think they truly signed up for when they got out of high school and then went to college. And now they're really putting their skills to the test. And I think that I know I'm incredibly grateful for Friendship Home and for uh, Norwell VNA and South Shore VNA and South Shore Hospital and all of those caregivers who are taking care of people who don't have access to their families right now and so on. So not to make this a somber sort of soliloquy, it's just to say thank you to everybody because I think everyone on this call has a contribution to make and has made contributions. and so. For me, as a member of the community and a member of the South Shore Chamber, I'm just grateful. Well, those were words well said, and uh, you know, we're all the Chamber, so um, we'll accept your lead. Great. Well, Paul? Well, Peter, if you were going to ask me about a book, I heard about this book you have. Well, you know, yeah. I'm, an, I'm an avid reader. So 
suggest all the light you cannot see. Yes. And who, who has read that? Yeah, half of it. <laughs> oh, half of it. Well, you get plenty of time. <laughs> and uh, Paula, you, you would read it. Who yeah. wrote that? Uh, Anthony Doa. Okay. Don't ask me to spell. I didn't know about a book report, but uh, uh, I would recommend that. And uh, I think you'll see uh, that love conquers all. Well, thank you. you. You've been a great supporter to so many of us on the South Shore. You've done a great job. And we appreciate you kicking off this first in a series. We hope it's a short series. We hope we, uh, we actually uh, come out of this fairly soon and can meet in person with everybody. Uh, but appreciate you doing this. We're gonna try to do this every Tuesday and Thursday uh, during the uh, shutdown and give people a chance to meet some of our leaders in the chamber and our leading businesses on the South Shore. I really appreciate you kicking it off. Appreciate everyone for joining and uh, check our calendar and upcoming events. Uh, Renee McGinnis, who is our chair and head of Norwell VNA, is going to uh, do this next Tuesday. And then uh, we have a number of uh, people who have accepted that we are beginning to slot in on the schedule. So check the event calendar, sign up, and it was uh, nice to start the morning this way. Thanks a lot, Paul. Yeah, okay, you're all welcome, and please stay safe. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, yeah. everybody. Have a great okay. day. Have yep. a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.